Hello, branch managers or potential branch managers. It's Todd Screamy here. And I want to share with you the top 10 attributes that we look for in branch managers. I think what we've learned in, in Summit and what I've learned in 15 years of coaching people professionally is there's one or two or three percent of branch managers that really can run a great business and really grow it. And I don't mean that as demeaning or anything like that. It's just that a lot of people struggle to either have those skills or to develop those skills. And so what this is about is the top 10 things that I want. And I don't know if a branch manager needs to hit every single one of these, but certainly eight out of 10 for sure, okay? Because we all have weaknesses. So number one is that they manage by metrics, not feelings. I can't tell you how big of a deal this is. You know, a branch manager either makes the loan manager submit the loan in 10 days or they let it go to 17 days and everything's a rush. Um, that's the branch manager, that's a metric, okay? Either your loan officer does 15 sales calls a week and 60 phone calls or they don't. Either you look at it or you don't, okay? Either you hold them accountable or you don't. Those are all metrics, okay, instead of feelings, okay? Number two is having a big vision or a clear sense of direction. You know, I hired a branch manager recently, and I said, my first interview was about a year ago, and I said, what do you want to build? He says, I want to build a region that does three or 400 loans a month. That was the first thing out of his mouth. And his branch currently does 60 loans a month. So I was like, okay, that's someone who I want. You know, if someone wants to build these big branches and do big retail and do 100 plus loans a month per branch, I got to have that person. I got to have someone who is not happy closing 30 loans a month or 20 loans a month or 50 loans a month, okay? Why? Because we're playing a big game, okay? Why not? Number three is servant leadership. So this is something that's helped me a lot. It's just natural to me to want to serve people. Uh, I remember being that way as a kid. There's a lot of people they just think of themselves. That's really what they think about. They don't really think about serving others. And I just don't, you got to have that to work at Summit. You have to, okay? If, if other people don't come first, then it's, this is not the place for you. It's just not, okay? Because our job is to improve people's lives and change their lives. And you can only do that by serving them, okay? Number four is great, great recruiter. Hmm, gosh, at the risk of sounding offensive, most branch managers are horrible at this. They just suck. They just, I mean, I'm like, dude, you have to actually call people and meet with people to get to know people to recruit the best ones, and it's a process, and sometimes it takes a long time. Um, and they just, they're like, well, I'm doing some loans. I know you're doing loans, but let's hire a sales manager then. Let's hire a recruiter. Let's pay an outside recruiter. Let's do something to fix the recruiting, okay? It's just a big problem for a lot of people. Uh, by the way, when you're really influential, people want to work for you. So it doesn't have to be so forced when you're really good at what you do. Okay? Number five, a company or team player. So the team that you're on, which is the Summit Funding Team, needs to be more important than any one individual, including you. Okay? I call it protecting the goose. I call it being a team player. And I run some, some I, one of my EVPs, I said this, and he was like, gosh, I never thought of it that way. I literally run Summit, even though I own Summit, I literally run Summit like someone is, like a, like a company is paying me to be CEO. That's how I think about it. Because the company is not important about me. It's not about me. It's about how my position can help run the company and do great things, okay? Number six, is there a relationship builder? We had a branch manager come on recently, and they brought a bunch of relationships with him. He had people calling us that didn't even talk to him. They said, hey, I heard you hired this person. Uh, can you interview me? They just, they're connectors. They, people, they, they, they're about developing relationships. And it's not just relationships with the realtors. It's relationships in the office. It's relationship with people at Mothership. They're just good relationship builders. People want to be around them. I kind of crack up when I, when I coach people and they have trouble setting lunch appointments and stuff. And I said, well, you know what the problem is. And they say, what? I said, they're just not that into you, okay? I never had that problem. I would, I would send someone a text and they're like, yep, when you want to have lunch? Because I'm positive, I'm engaging, I care about people, I work on their business. Like, I never had that problem. I don't understand. It's just people not being in relationship. Number seven, five years experience as a branch manager. Guys, 
you don't know your butt from a hot rock until five years. It's just, it's such a process. I had a call with a branch manager today, and I was like, dude, you know what your problem is? He saw what? I said, you're a one-year branch manager. And so you don't know right from wrong. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to run the meetings. You don't know how to recruit. It's a process, okay? And so, you know, that's, that's a big thing with me. Number eight, open-mindedness or coachable. I don't know it all. You don't know it all. So let's find people that know more than we know, and let's go, I call it sucking their brain dry, okay? Like literally put your mouth to their ear and suck their brain out of the ear hole, okay? That's, what I, that's why I think about it. So you got to be coachable. you got to read books. you got to be in coaching. you got to do this stuff. you got to do site visits because it's about running a great business, not being mediocre, okay? Number nine is high moral character. Um, what I mean by this is there's a lot of people that operate in the gray, I don't want you to operate in the gray. It's either right or it's wrong. And it's that simple. And a lot of people struggle with that. They really struggle with that. Number 10 is they lead by example. Okay. So you're, if you close 20 loans a month, yeah, you're going to attract originators that close 10. And you're going to keep them. But you can't be hiring brand, uh, loan officers that close 10 loans a month and you're closing two. It doesn't work. It never has worked. It never will work. Because... You can't be, uh, I don't know what they call that, but there's a term for it where you say to do one thing, but then you do the opposite. It can't work. So you have to lead by example. Guys, that is my 10. That's Summit Funding's 10. If you hit 8 out of 10 of those, then I'm interested or you're in the right place. If you don't, you're in the wrong place or you don't want to work for Summit because it's not going to work out long term. That's what we've learned is to attract the right people to our company. Thanks for listening, guys. Make it a great day.